Hey, I'm Rob Gant with the Goose Creek Gazette and the Berkeley Independent. I'm in Somerville today with my teammate Roger Lee of the Somerville Journal Scene, and this is the next edition of Football Talk. Uh, special thanks to our sponsors, Tosha Precious Metal Recycler LLC, Grace Funeral Services, and Hoover the Mover in Monk's Corner. Roger, getting to the end of the season. I know you saw some great games last Friday. Uh, kind of tell us about those and then uh, lead us down the path of what you got coming up. All right. Uh, well, we had to start off on the skis up front. We had Pinewood taking on Lawrence Manning. Lost another uh, ball game. Wasn't that competitive. Um, Pinewood's going to have to go to Augusta Christian this week, looking to finish you know, stronger than they've they've done the last few weeks. They have that one win against Northwood, uh, but uh, you know they need to uh, clean some things up if they're going to uh, finish strong against Augusta Christian. Any shot at the playoffs with them or uh, with Skiza, it, possibly. But they, I mean, I'm, I would say if they don't win at Augusta Christian, they, they're out for sure. Okay, and gotcha. the prop, you know, it's a long shot. I, I don't think. I don't even know how the skis uh, uh, divisions work because they don't just go by the region. They they put them all together come playoff time. So, you nice. know, we'll see. All right. Uh, we had a great game between uh, Ashley Ridge and Fort Dorchester. I told you Ashley Ridge would compete hard. They competed really hard. They had the lead uh, early in the game, and, you know, everybody knew Fort was going to come back, which they did, but it was tied 17-all going into the final quarter, uh, and Fort pulled it out. It was a 31-25 win for um, Fort, but Ashley Ridge had the ball, was driving in the final minutes. Uh, you know, if they could have just maybe converted a first down, and you know, they could have pulled off an upset maybe. Got to give Fort a lot of credit. They just, they're, you know, they find ways to win or a way to win finds them. You know, they're, they're I mean, got to pat yeah. them on the back for that because they, they always seem to find a way to come out on top. They do. I mean, you know, once Ashley Ridge took the lead, their receivers stepped up and just, you know, yeah, their speed, they got great speed at the receiver position and just, you know, they got got open in the middle of the field. You know, they just, they never quit those guys, uh, those Patriots. Seems like Ashley Ridge is snake bitten a little bit. It seems like, it, 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 you know, I don't follow them every week, but they've been close a bunch. Is Kenny Walker, I mean, what kind of vibe you get from their team and Kenny Walker about just, like, you know, how close they've been a lot of times? Well, uh, you know, he's, uh, when I talked to him after the game, he was, uh, I would say, kind of relieved because he knew he had a chance in that game uh, and, and doesn't feel that, uh, you know, Somerville beat up on him pretty bad a few weeks ago. Right, right. Uh, they had close game with Berkeley, almost, almost beat Berkeley. Had a chance. And so he just feels that that Somerville game isn't indicative of what his team is all about. He thought his team played the way he wants them to play um, Friday night against the Fort. And so, you know, he's happy about that. They can still make the playoffs. Uh, you know, they, they uh, have some, well, well, we'll get to that in a second. But, you know, the, you know it's not uh, gloomy around Ashley Ridge because they could make the playoffs and actually maybe some, surprise some people because of the record. Yeah, they're matched up with Region 7 in the first round. So, um, certainly a very winnable game for Ashley Ridge. When, when, when they get in the playoffs, everybody be 0-0. Zero and zero. All right. right. Sorry to interrupt you. No, 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 that's okay. But that's that's okay. what I do. That's what I do. I'm, I'm a master at interrupting. People. That's quite all right. Okay. Uh, uh, in that game, uh, uh, Saab had uh, accounted for 300 yards of offense. Matt Duncan also had a great game, had some big runs. I would say he probably finished with around 300 himself. Uh, you know, both of them connected with their receivers, multiple receivers. So, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be interesting as the playoffs get here for both those teams, I believe. Gotcha. Um, I uh, want to give a shout out to Chaz Jones. He had like uh, 93 receiving yards and was just giving the, uh, the the Ashley Ridge defensive back fits. I mean, there were a couple of plays where if he could just they could have just hit him, you know, that would have been another score. But uh, they couldn't get the ball to him, so probably you know pressure or whatever. Gotcha. Uh, so this week Ashley Ridge is going to have their homecoming game against Stahl. Uh, you know, you got to line up and play the game, but you know, uh, I'd have to say Ashley is the heavy favorite in that game. Absolutely, uh, Stall Stall will play hard. They do have some players. They just don't have enough, and Ashley Ridge should be way too much for Stall. Uh, then the big thing, everything everybody's going to be talking about it all week is you know Fort Dorchester's hosting Somerville. Uh, Somerville's been licking their chops, wanting a chance to make their mark this year. You know, they feel like. 
Uh, they've been very competitive. You know, that game with Berkeley, they, they got beaten the last uh, minute, I believe, of the game. Mm-hmm. They played a good team out of Georgia, and they feel like, you know, they were they held their own against th- that team, which might be, you know, one of the better teams in the nation. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Somerville's hungry. Uh, they've been beating uh, teams by large margins. But then you got Ford Dorchester just keeps winning, like you were talking about earlier. They just find a way to win each and every week. They have a ridiculous streak against low country opponents. Uh, I think it's up to 34 or something like that now. They, they've went 50 and 5 since they lost to Ashley Ridge, which is the last low country opponent that they, uh, they lost to. And those five wins are against, you know, like three of them are Dutch Fork. And then uh, uh, two of them are to uh, teams from other parts. I think Hillcrest. It, d- does it go back to 2014? Is that right? I think. 2014. Yeah. yeah. So th- they want they won a lot of games in a row. And yeah. um, I guess if I was going to try to break it down, I was, I, you know, yes, I did. I, Ford, Ford Dorchester's found a lot of ways to win every week. I guess one negative to that is you're, if you're always in a battle, there is a little bit of wear and tear, I think, that can take place on a team. Um, so what do you think? I mean, you think that all the battles that Fort Dorchester has been through and, and taking everybody's best shot, you think that catches up to them this week? You don't have you, you don't have to predict the game. I'll predict the game for you because I, I you got. I'm just it. I'm just looking for a really uh, tight game. Now I've I've been disappointed in the past sometimes when I say that about Fort Dorchester and they just roll, but I just think this is the year that it's going to be a tight game, just like that Ashley Ridge game was. And really, I think that game's going to help Fort because now those guys are like, "Whoa, you know, we almost we almost lost to the to the one cross town rival, so we don't want to." You know, I think they will have extra motivation in practice this week. So they're going to be tough. They're going to be tough, but Somerville, I think, has some pieces that Ashley Ridge doesn't have, uh, and so you know, we'll see. I'm going to save Roger from having to pick this game, uh, but I'm going to pick it. Nothing against Fort Dorchester. I like Steve LaPrade. I've always liked the Patriots uh, since I moved into town, you know, what, 14, 15 years ago. But I'm going with the Greenway. Okay. I'm going right. with the Greenway. I, I think Somerville, I think Somerville is, 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 is going to find a way to win. I think it's going to be tight. Somerville is going to find a way to win. So, go Greenway. We'll see. What else you got? That's it. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I mean, you know, speaking of rivalries, I've got – a couple of those matchups on my uh, slate this week over in Berkeley County. But first, I'm going to talk about a couple of teams that are region champions, um, starting off with the Timberland Wolves. I went out there last Friday. They um, knocked off Oceanside Collegiate 34-14. to um, They are at North Charleston this Friday. It's kind of a game. It's mere formality. Timberland's just kind of way ahead of North Charleston. Timberland will win the football game. Uh, going back over Friday night's game, uh, Timberland's defense um, – led by the coordinator, Justin Scott. They had five turnovers. Uh, William Chandler was a linebacker. He returned an interception 46 yards for a touchdown. They kind of turned the tide in, um, per- permanently in Timberland's favor. It was a one-possession game. He, 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 he steps in front of a pass that's deflected by a teammate, goes back 46 yards with it, um, and then pretty much that was, that was it. Um, and then uh, also I want to mention Tyler Sumter, defensive back for uh, the Wolves. Listen, this is a PSA. Don't throw the ball his direction because if it goes over there to him, he's going to get it. He had two interceptions against Oceanside Collegiate. Um, I, I know, I know, he's got 12 to 14 interceptions in the last like season and a half. Just don't throw it, Tyler Sumter. Okay. Um, Sam Moultrie had a fumble recovery, as did Daquan Gleason. Uh, offensively, uh, Sumter hauled in a touchdown pass. Uh, DJ Gaston threw another touchdown pass to a young man named Jamari Nelson. He had a heck of a game. Sorry if I'm leaving somebody out for Timberland, but uh, they seem to be clicking on all cylinders. They'll handle North Charleston on Friday. Another group of uh, champions are the Hanahan Hawks. The Hawks uh, hosting Manning on Friday. They um, knocked off Manning uh, 19 to 14. Scored in the um, scored in the fourth quarter to take the lead and made a defensive stand inside the red zone to hang on 19-14. Great job by uh, Coach David Morbitzer and crew to win the region championship in his first season coaching. Uh, the Hawks have a bit of a gimme, I believe, this Friday. Waccamaw rolls into town. Waccamaw is not a very successful program, but the Warriors are coming off their first win in a very long time. Uh, they beat Academic Magnet on Friday. Um, Still, Hanahan's going to be too much. Uh, rehashing a little bit of Friday's game for Hanahan. Um, Hunter Mills 
score twice for the Hawks, and he also recovered a fumble. Um, another name to mention there, uh, Luke Mills. Uh, he's, a, he's a linebacker for the Hawks. He's averaging about nine or ten tackles a game. Um, he'll, have a, he'll have an excellent game on Friday against Waccamaw. Uh, two biggies. Speaking of rivalry week, let's see, where do I, where do I start? Um, I'll start with G, uh, Goose Creek at Stratford, um, and, I'm, and you're going to have to make a pick this week. I, I picked Fort Dorchester Somerville. you got to help me out. you got to pick Goose Creek and Stratford. You've seen them both. You have a general idea about what to expect. Uh, so Goose Creek at Stratford, it's a huge Region 7-5A game. It's also for bragging rights. Um, Last year, Stratford won 27-7 to end a 10-game winning streak for Goose Creek in the series. Uh, I've, I've seen both of these teams, and, you know, if you compare the scores, it might lead you to believe that Goose Creek is a, is a clear favorite to win going away. I've seen both teams. I think they, they kind of match up okay. I, I, I think it's going to be a knockdown drag out to the end. Um, I like where Goose Creek is kind of kind of – how they're clicking right now. They played a clean game on Friday, beating James Island. Uh, Stratford's offense is pretty good. Um, had a, had a little, little bit of a rough night against Berkeley on Friday, losing 51-20. to 20. Um, But they do have some weapons. So I'm thinking it's going to be a very competitive game come down in the fourth quarter. Um, Roger, I'm going to turn it over to you, big guy. Uh, how, how do you kind of see Goose Creek and Stratford? And go ahead and make a pick for us. <laughs> Again, it seems like, to. seems like all these games are just going to be really good games. Uh, I could see either team winning that, but it just seems like the Gators are building momentum. And I don't think they're done building yet. I think, I think they're going in the right direction, and maybe they'll edge out Stratford. Uh, I think Stratford is going to have a closer game, certainly, than they had against Berkeley. But, you know, that's Berkeley. But also, I just think they're going to, you know, that was kind of a wake-up call for Stratford. So I don't think it's going to be a blowout or anything like that. So you're going with the Gators? I'm going with the Gators. There you go, Stratford fans. Roger's number is 555-123-4567. Call Roger. Um, no, it should be it should be a heck of a game. I'll be there at that one. Um, very excited to see that. Uh, all right, another kind of a rivalry game. Berkeley is traveling over to Cane Bay. The, they've kind of become rivals in the last couple of years. Uh, they were... They were in the same region as 4A teams the last two years, and they decided the region championship uh, the last couple of years. So, and the, you know, and, and, and both times Berkeley came out with a very close victory here. Berkeley is speaking of team that's kind of clicking on all cylinders. They just, you know, they just scored 51 against Stratford, and they seem to be just running up, lighting up the scoreboard wherever they go. Cane Bay is coming off a loss over Wando. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, I. You've seen Berkeley, and I think I think Cane Bay too. Do you, do you have any idea, kind of, how to break that game down? I mean, do, do, I mean, do, does Cane Bay have any shot? You think? Yes, they have a shot, uh, but I think I think the Stags' defense is going to be too tough for them. Think? I think that's why Wando beat them. Um, you know, we know that Cane Bay can move the ball, and and they have a good program there. But I, you know, Berkeley is going to be able to match whatever they do because they got all those all that talent on offense. Tons of weapons. And I think the difference is going to be that the Berkeley defense is better than Kane Bay's. Okay. I, yeah. I, I mean, I I certainly see that. Uh, mentioning a Berkeley kid from Friday, uh, running back Keyshawn Wicks. He had 200 yards rushing, scored a touchdown. Uh, great night. Uh, great night by him. Uh, one more matchup I want to talk about. St. John's, speaking of, speaking of teams that are lighting up the scoreboard, St. John's Christian is traveling over to Cathedral. Um, the Cavaliers are coming off a 64 0 win over Patrick Henry. That is their second straight shutout and their third shutout of the season. Um, so St. John's Christian is really getting it done on both sides of the ball right now. And, and there's so many people you can mention. I mean, the quarterback, Booker, um, he had a great game against Patrick Henry. There's a young man named Bryce Taylor. He had a great game. Bryce Butler, um, man, I'm, I'm gonna—I know I'm gonna forget somebody. Dylan Parsons uh, had a, a score of touchdown for St. John's Christian, um, and I hate to leave people out, but there's just so many for St. John's Christian that are having a having kind of having a good time right now. Cathedral, uh, from what I understand, Cathedral's having a rough time of it right now. I would look for St. John's Christian to just you know, just can kind of continue to roll as the playoffs begin uh, the following week on November 2nd. Um, well, that basically does it for my side of the, the, the fence, as we say. Um, 
We did have a little bit of news this past weekend. Sunday, the Shrine Bowl team was announced, the South Carolina Shrine Bowl team that will take on North Carolina. Um, and also the North-South selections came out uh, on Monday. Uh, Roger, I know that you, your area always has some players on those teams. Uh, who do you have on those teams this year? Uh, well, the Shrine Bowl obviously is the more prestigious uh, uh, game. Uh, and uh, Fort Dorchester linebacker Devon Gilmore was selected for that. You know, Coach LaPrade is going to be an assistant coach at that game. And I, you know, I think he picked the guy off his team. If they only get, I don't, I'm not saying they only gave him one choice, but that's the guy you want. I mean, Gilmore is just all over the field. Uh, you know, he can tackle, he can put pressure on the quarterback. He's just got a really, uh, I think the, the words they like to use with him is his, you know, got a real high motor, you know, just really always, always going, doesn't come out much. Uh, definitely going to play in college somewhere. So that's good to see him make the Shrine Bowl because uh, he hasn't announced where he, uh, where he wants to go yet. So um, On the North-South uh, team, uh, Fort Dorchester lineman Bruce Benjamin made that and two Somerville guys, uh, uh, quarterback Jonathan Bennett, a finalist for the Mr. Football Award. Right. He'll be one of the quarterbacks for the South team. And then linebacker Cole Phillips you know, got considered for that, but I think Cole Phillips is a good choice. He's, uh, he's you know, just having a good senior year. Well, over here on my side, let's see if I can remember those. I am getting old. You know, I recently <laughs> did just turn 44. So if I forget, forgive me. Uh, really, uh, I, I'm not going to forget though. Uh, on the Shrine Bowl selections, um, I had two from I had two from my side. Uh, first, starting with a young man. Interesting story. Uh, has not played yet this year, but he's going to make a return in the playoffs. They believe. A uh, young man named Cooper Dawson from uh, Hanahan. He's a defensive lineman, also plays tight end for the Hawks. He's had, he's had some successful moments in the past, uh, tore his knee up in the preseason, and um, he's been working hard to, to rehab his knee, and he's trying to get back in, in time for the playoffs. The other, the other young man that made it from the Berkeley County School District is uh, DJ Chisholm. He's a receiver for the Berkeley Stags, very fast young man. When he gets it in his hands, he's able to go the distance. Uh, this year, from what I can r remember, he is averaging about 20 yards a catch. So whenever he touches it, there's a very chance, there's a, there's a very good opportunity that he's going to do something explosive with it. So congratulations to those two guys. Uh, the Shrine Bowl is December 15th. That's at Wofford's Gibbs Stadium. I believe that game kicks off at 1 p.m. Um, it's always a great game. Uh, North Carolina has actually won three in a row, but South Carolina leads the series 44 to 33 and four. So um, moving on to the North-South selections, I have four of those. Uh, three of those are on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, the aforementioned Tyler Sumter from Timberland, who I advised everybody not to throw the ball at, he made it. Um, for the Wolves, uh, Goose Creek defensive lineman LJ Stanley, he made it for the Gators. Um, the other defensive guy is uh, Trey Morrison. He's a defensive back from Berkeley. Great, um, great defensive back. I had a picture of him in the preseason in a seven-on-seven -seven game, like going way up to make a catch, and it was a really nice picture. And he, he was getting way up there. And uh, the other player uh, for, on the North-South squad is uh, an offensive guy, Super Mario Anderson from Stratford. He, uh, he made the squad. Uh, for the for the Knights and uh, those four young men will be on the South will be on the South team um, and the South team has lost like 13 in the last 14 so hopefully those four can get uh, four guys can help the South side get turned around and uh, win that all-star game that is also December 15th that's at Brooks Stadium uh, coast on the campus of Coastal Carolina that game kicks off at noon uh, usually it's a very fun game um, well that does it for this week. Uh, my name is Rob Gant. This is Roger Lee. Special thanks to our sponsors, Tosha LLC, Precious Metal Recycler, Grace Funeral Services, and Hoover the Mover in Monk's Corner. See y'all Friday.